Side Squad podcast. Yeah. Uh, we have a full episode today. We have oh, a guys, lot. Sports happened this Holy weekend. Holy crap. This is one of those episodes that everything happened. Oh, all the sports. Everything. And there was only two games in the NFL. But yeah. everything else happened. Sports. Everything. Yeah. It happened. Sports. First, we would like to shout out a thank you to Luke Keechley and Antonio Gates after his their retirements. Brave. Uh, yeah. Keechley retired early. I'm he glad did. he did, though, with his health. Yeah, yeah, no, it was bad. Like, he had, like, what? How many concussions? Four concussions, yeah. I think, in the last five years. Yeah, that's no... I had two concussions in high school, and I thought that was awful. Let alone adding eight or four or something like that. I remember Sam Shields had five in while he was in Green Bay. Oh god! And then he retired, and then ended ended up playing for Los Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, We also won a Super Bowl because, (laughs) hey, I I do remember Sam Shields did catch a big fourth down fake punt. Yeah. Got us in the ball game. So shout out to, to Shields. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Luke Keekley. Hall of Famer, easily. Antonio Gates, Hall of Famer, easily. So. Yeah. yeah. Dude, like, Antonio Gates is one of the defining members of the tight end position. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And Luke Keekley, what do you, because my big thing is, is, like, with players that are tired early, it's like, I don't really care what you do with your time, and, like, how your time span is, like, how long it is. What do you do in that time span? Right. Because look at, like, Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson, same thing with, like, Luke Keekley. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, Luke Keekley was, like, the f- field general. Oh, yeah, yeah. Luke. Rookie of the year, defensive MVP, or yeah, de- rookie of the year, defensive MVP, a second year in the league, mm-hmm. multiple time leader in tackles, and with him wanting to, Bowl. yeah, with him wanting to stay in football, I think he'll be like the next like good. I think he'd be a guy. good defensive coordinator. Yeah, or I even s- start with a linebacker coach. Yeah, I think yeah, he linebacker needs to, coach. I think he needs to build up. up, but I feel yeah, like no, he but I'm just saying, like, yeah, linebacker coach have a good place eventually. Right. I could even see him somewhere down in the future potentially being a head coach. Who's that? On how Who's his coaching Panthers career works. Coach Matt, Matt Rule, right? Rule. Matt Rule. Yeah. A great hire. They si- he signs on to the job and then he loses one of his biggest players. Yeah, no kidding. He loses his, his best defensive player. That's probably one of the biggest reasons he wanted to go there. He, is, he, gets, to, he gets to pick his new ringleader, essentially. That's and, true. Yeah. But yeah, no, Carolina's just kind of in a complete rebuild. I think Matt Rule's a good hire. Right? Oh, I think I, so, that, too. They're just a team in a complete rebuild, and that's fine. That's the cycle of life in sports. Yeah. It's just a matter of if you can get yourself out of it. It's a lot quicker to get out of in the NFL than it is any other sport. So. Yeah. Well, we'd also like to send out a congratulations to all the 100-year Hall of Famers. Uh, none of the, like, regular Hall of Famers, like Troy Fall, Malu, and all that have been announced yet, but it's to come, so. True. Paul Malu better get in there. Just saying. No, nah, he'll get in. Paul Malu. Uh, if if Tori Holt and Isaac Bruce do not get in this time, I'm going to be upset. They have been snubbed for so many years. One of the uh, one of the one of the Hall of Famers, the hundred year ones, was a uh, old. He was a safety and a cornerback, but he played seven seasons and recorded fifty two interceptions over seven seasons. Wow! Holy cow. Three weird. seasons in a row with nine. That's insane. Yeah. It was sad though. Did you guys see the video of like? Um, uh, Cowboys wide receiver who's in Don yeah, who just yeah. snubbed again. He got yeah. snubbed again, and, and that just sucks. Sad and it was a bummer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he really should be in the all. He was on the all like decade team or something mm-hmm. like that. He still is. is We're gonna put player. him in the side squad pod Hall of Fame. Shout out! Can, hopefully Can I make it to the side squad pod? Hall of no, you're banned. No. <laughs> I'm banned. never making a list. <laughs> I'm banned. You're not even a voting member at You just point. made a list. Oh, <laughs> now it's the lexicon something or another. Oh my god. Just I haven't watched it. any AEW. I'm so sorry. I watch AEW every week. I, I haven't. And NXT. I True wrestling fan here. True. Yeah, but, not but fan. I, I, am, I am watching the Royal Rumble. That's good. That's good. Me too. We'll get to that in a little bit. True. Alright. So uh, next we're just going to rapid fire our thoughts on these different topics because there's a lot and we don't have seven hours to go over everything. Fair enough. Yeah. So we'll start off with the MLB. Scandal? scandal thing going Who's on. Done? I heard on the radio it, it, it's the biggest scandal in MLB history. Okay. That is not true, only because the Black Sox scandal is a thing. But this is probably one of the biggest scandals since. The either, steroid. No, I'd say it's way bigger than that. Well, I think in sports it's the most. It's like the biggest thing since probably Deflate Gate. Yeah. 
No, I even think it's bigger than that. Oh, well, I admit I think it is it's too. Bigger than that, because I've actually heard a lot of pitchers, and actually a lot of pitchers have outspoken about this. They said they would rather throw a pitch at a guy taking steroids than a guy who knows yeah. the pitch. Yeah, because you know if he has on steroids, he can still strike out. He's just going to hit the ball farther when right. he makes contact. Yeah. But that, that's what I mean. And, like, the one thing with, like, um, like deflate gate or all this stuff, it doesn't necessarily affect the whole outcome of a game. With a deflate football, they help you score more, but the defense has to still go out there. This literally affected an entire World Series yeah. for two years. Maybe yeah. even two years. We don't know if they – I'm assuming they did it against the Nationals. Supposedly it's been – yeah, since the '80s, yeah, supposedly there's been sign stealing. Yeah, just yeah, signs. I think that's the thing. Buzzers. Sign stealing has been around. I I feel like signs has probably been around, been around for a while. Oh, it's probably it's been just, around like the whole this time. this level of cheating is yeah. ridiculous because it really the is. evidence against it is so crazy. Like all of these, you know, like like Duncan um, kind of said with the whole electronic wires and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, that's crazy, you know? Like, and there's videos, you know, Jose Altuve not wanting his jersey taken off. Well, see, but I don't think... He was mic'd up. It wasn't a buzzer, is what they said. Yeah, but but still... But but still, why doesn't he want his jersey taken off after hitting, you know, a game-winning home run? Especially with the body he has. You know, like... You don't need to hide. You know, like... That's super suspicious. Yeah, no, it's very suspicious. Here's a fun little fact. In 2017, I'm going to read you off Jose Altuve's stats in the postseason. At Minute Maid Park, he had a 472 batting average, six home runs, and 12 RBIs. At any other ballpark, and this this isn't even close, 143 average, one home run, two RBIs. Yeah, I believe it. Not even close. Home field advantage Honestly, right there. It's it, like this is to the point where the Astros honestly should possibly get their World Series taken away. Like, it's it's bad what they did. It really is. Here's like, a fun... I, I don't believe in, like, theories or anything or something, like, but here's a theory. So this year's World Series, the Nationals and the Astros, no team won a home game. What if the Astros threw this World Series to get MLB off their tails about yeah, it? I'd believe that, it? Yeah, that makes sense, actually. I'm not going to be the one to say it because I don't like to just assume players are going to throw a World Series, but it happened with the White Sox. I don't know. I think they, they definitely could have. They just threw it because they're like, screw it. We have our World Series. We don't want to get taken away. Let's Honestly, if, this I, World Series. if I knew I'd get caught if I didn't, Imagine the it. Dodgers. You lose twice. You lose back to back World Series, series to yeah. cheaters. To yeah. cheaters. Because the Red Sox did it too. Yeah, and the Yankees reportedly did it too. Like, <sighs> like and that's that's the crazy thing is more and more just keeps unraveling about this on which teams were doing it. Right. Like, it's this is, horrible. This is the worst cheating scandal since uh, fantasy basketball in uh, marketing class, Duncan. Yo. But it's, it's just like, no, that like this is literally on a level like professional sports really has never seen. Like, like to play yeah. game, like that, you know, that's more of a personal thing, you know, like on if you like the football is more played. But like this literally determined two back to back World Series. Right. Like that's crazy, which honestly. And it potentially caused a third, because let's say the Astros did throw the World Series. But yeah. then we didn't get a fair series. Yeah. I mean, the, right now the Dodgers could have two more World Series yeah. to the team's history. You know, and, but, you know, we'll never know if, you know, because, and that's the thing, is this is obviously still an ongoing investigation, like, nothing's technically been proven, but I mean, it's just, there's so many signs, the whole sign stealing has been proven, like. Do you think that there's more than just the team, their teams, that have been told about or reported on or whatever that have done it, do you think there's a lot more teams that have done it? Because people have been saying that. People like the Yankees and all that, they've been doing it forever. Yeah, I mean, just... I think slowly but surely they'll maybe find some more teams that have done it. Maybe not in this era or like this time frame, but maybe in the past time frame. And then it's yeah. going to get crazy because then yeah. it's like, oh, shoot. Well, like you were saying earlier, what what team did it in like the 80s or something like that? Um, Duh, I don't know. I guess I'm... I guess I don't know. It, it's on um, our Twitter if you want to go. But, but yeah, like but a yeah, White Sox too. Like yeah. it's just been like it's been rumored. Like science things have been around. White Sox, yep. Yes. It was the White Sox because Tommy Larusa, who's a World Series champion with the Cardinals, um, World Series manager, he literally would flick on a light in center field to yep. signal what pitch. He literally signal light like the gate, like a Gatorade sign or whatever, some sign. 
like the light would like flicker and he would like control like they'd have like some way to like flick it whatever the light whichever pitch it was gonna throw it's honestly crazy. to come up with that though you gotta you gotta be thinking you know it's kind of crazy me and a friend at work were talking about this it's like in all this time you spent preparing for okay we're gonna hit this can this many times when they throw this pitch blah blah you could have just you know watch film take some yeah. extra bats at beat you yeah watch film like everyone else Okay, Clayton Kershaw throws this pitch on this count this many times. So you're not smart enough to figure it out, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Maybe that's what's with Houston. Maybe Houston's just not a smart enough baseball team to actually beat the Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, and the worst part is, like, this could not come at a worse time for baseball. Like, they're obviously... No their numbers, kidding. Their numbers have been obviously going down for the last few years, and, like, they were just kind of at this point where, like, they needed something good to happen, and then this whole scandal happened. Yeah. And, like, it just... It's going to really you know, tarnish Major League Baseball. It, yeah, because it pisses off older fans even more knowing that. Well, and, and now and the old fans are pissed off because they think that the balls are, like, juiced up so there's yeah. no home runs hit. But that, you know, yeah. I mean, it's... But, like, their MLB is trying so hard to be relevant again. I mean, I, I shouldn't say irrelevant, but, like... Oh, yeah, like, they're doing so much. At, like, well, and the big thing is, is like MLB is not active on social media because you can't, like, yeah. post any... They have, like, they're strict on their rights of, like... Oh, excuse me, posting stuff on, like, social media. So you can't even really do that. Like, I don't know. I just don't think MLB has been doing as good a business side as, as all these other leagues. That's including MLS. Like, you know, everyone likes to rip, rip on soccer. It's the fastest growing sport in America. You know, it's about to pass baseball. It's about to pass hockey soon. And, know? I mean, their their yeah, socials are, it. like, fire, too. Yeah. It's so, like, they, they're in with... Like, I love, I love hockey, thing. but it's not as popular here in America as, like, Canada right. or over, like, in Europe. I think we saw a big grow in hockey followers, like, recently, but I think that trend's definitely gone down. Oh, yeah. Like, right now, NFL is always going to remain on top. Basketball has always been popular around the world. And then you have right. MLS. Those are the three trending sports right yeah. now. Yeah. It's... Like, obviously, like, oh, you look at TV ratings. Like, yeah, there are probably more, but MLB has a longer season, and there's more teams to go around. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just this is just a really bad look for MLB. It's a bad look for Rob Manfred, yeah. even though he has nothing to do with it. But this is gonna really make or make or break how he is as a commissioner, how he handles his scandal. Yeah, because this yeah because this seriously is an, an offense to strip of the World Series. This affected a World Series, not affected yeah. a game. All seven games that, that went to. I mean, yeah. This 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 obviously affects the. You know, the World Series, like, this affects people's legacy, you know? Like, no kidding. If Jose Altuve really did know the pitch is coming to him, that takes away any credibility Jose Altuve did in that postseason. Like, Right. This... And then how do you trust him to be, like, going forward yeah. that he won't? Because he, Jose Altuve has probably been the most public Houston Astro, and he has said time and time again, he has never cheated while playing professional baseball. Well, and he's still standing by that he hasn't yeah. cheated. But, I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just bad. Like, it's really bad. Poor. I mean, obviously, the Astros have been punished. Like, but they are at the point where, like Noah said, like, this is something that really could threaten them to be stripped of that World Series. Like, well, it's like you can say they were, you know, rightfully punished. How so? They still keep their World Series. All their players are still playing. Right. So, so they lost AJ. They lost Hoot. their... Manager yeah. and GM, but, but they still have that roster. And they intact. fired them right away, anyways. Right. They're just the fall guys, really. Right. Yeah. Like don't get me wrong. Like having a manager is really important in baseball. Having a good GM it matters. But with this team that they have, because the Astros are still a really good baseball team. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, for me, it may not see, it may not be as much of an impact as it would like in the future. But like this immediate factor, I was like, screw it, we can still win a World Series with this team. Yeah. So that you need to attack them with the players. You need to. Like, hit it where it actually is going to affect them. Right. Yeah. Or else they're just probably going to figure out some way. I'm not saying they're going to cheat again, but, like, they're just going to keep You never on. know. They're going to be like, oh, you slapped us on the wrist by firing our manager. That's fine. We'll get another one. Yeah. We can still win. Yeah. But I just, yeah. You know, it's like you said, this is kind of where, man, this is going to kind of, not necessarily determine Manfred's legacy, but, like, this is going to be a defining moment for baseball. Because, you know, if nothing happens with, like, the World Series or the players, you know, What's stopping a team in 15 years after all this dies down? Yeah. They do it again. Because they're not going to, you know, as of right now, they're not going to get their players suspended. They're not going to get their World Series taken away. Right. You know? You I, know think, so, I think the only way you can rectify you, it is taking the World Series away, actually. I think you either have to take away the World Series or you have to suspend their 
big name players, like the players that did it, mm-hmm. that are, are being accused of it. Right, but the thing with that is, you can you prove that but they're then, the yeah. ones that did it, and then that throws a whole bunch of other stuff in there that. Yeah, we it just know sucks because it just shows now that Kenley Jensen. Um, everybody said how he always melts in the playoffs. Well, <laughs> now, we, now we know why. No, but that's the thing too. That affects <laughs> that that affects his legacy kind of because he could be let's say he's a Hall of Famer someday, whatever. And it's like, yeah, we can never get the World Series done. That's gonna affect him now. Yeah. Clayton, Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw is a prime example. Clayton Kershaw at Minute Maid Park has like a four point something ERA in the playoffs. And like in that World Series, he'd be like a four. I don't know. Yeah. I have, I have the numbers, but I can't find it. Someone sent it to me, but. Again, it's not even close. Like those are legacy effectors. Yeah, it's yeah. Dodgers could have two World Series, but they have they could be back to back champions this decade. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Damn, indeed. Yeah. yeah, we can move on to the MLB scandal now. It was yeah. just it's that was probably the biggest, biggest. Not just like like it was a shock, but like that was very big from this last week. It was yes. yeah. It was bad. Uh, so the next next rapid fire is Odell uh, likes yeah. to spank police officers. Yeah, Char- very the, intoxicated. The, the police, I guess, dropped the charges like two days ago. So this yeah, whole I, 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 no, it's gonna blow over. OBJ was just having a good time. He was drunk. No, I don't condone it, obviously. But like, well, if you're Kevin Stefanski, that's the best way, the best way to make to take to control that true. team is to do something to Odell. Exactly, because they're gonna get rid of him anyway. Right now, you can be like, hey. Kevin Stefanski can look like an alpha male. Be exactly. Like, hey, this is why I traded Odell. Which is so what the Browns gonna... need. Right. That's true. I'd say paying the college players is worse than the spanking the officers. Well, yeah, because then the NCAA can that... get involved. <laughs> yeah, but I, was... I think he's just proving, he's just showing his opinion that they need to get paid. Don't get me wrong. I, I do think college players should be reimbursed some way, but that that was pretty bad that he was handing out money. Yeah, but was, I love Joe Bro's response. I'm not in college anymore. I'm, I'm about to go make the play in the right. NFL. I'll take some money. Screw it. <laughs> so, say with a, yeah, exactly. Say with Jefferson. It's like, I'm going to sell your cleats for 200 k Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. It's cool. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, what's next? Rivers moved to L.A. Or yeah. to Florida, sorry. So, Florida. uh... Philip Rivers is officially out of San Diego. Yeah. Does this mean that obviously he might not come back? As, I doubt he's coming back. As oh the yeah, Chargers. he's definitely not coming back. Well, I just don't know what. Like in my opinion, I don't really know a team that would want him personally. Like uh, where so it's it's sumo, sumo contender. But even I just I don't know. Happens. Like I don't know if it's just me. I kind of like obviously his numbers this last last year weren't great. Watch Chicago. He's like a lot. Chicago. Titans. 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 Yeah. To Chicago, I can see Chicago. They're, I trade, could... they're trading for Alex Smith. <laughs> that would be dumb. A one-legged Alex Smith. No, they're gonna get Andy Dalton. I've been over this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we already discussed this. They're gonna stick. They're gonna go with Andy Dalton because that that is a be- that is a Bears thing to do. Is the most a, Bears a, quarterback is not currently a Bear. Apparently, if Tom Brady <laughs> leaves Foxborough, Bill Belichick's gonna go after Andy Dalton though. I heard about that. Well, Speaking. I will say this though: Tom Brady did move to Connecticut. That's yeah. our next one. What? What a segue! Yeah, I feel did like that's... Cl- did he clear out his locker for the first time? Yeah. Oh yeah, he yeah. did. But when you move to Connecticut, it's like, what? Well, where in Connecticut? Because that's still technically the New England area. Technically, yeah. he's in New England, but he's far enough away where you could easily say. Oh, uh, because where where did he move in Connecticut? I didn't see. Uh, he ain't going to Baltimore though, and that would be. Like the only no. city close. To well, because like wherever he lives, like how far is Foxborough from wherever? Is the Jets? Is he gonna go to the Jets just to beat Bill? Oh, uh, I'd watch it. I, mean, I would I'd hate. It. I would hate that. I would not watch the NFL. That'd be a good time. Would not follow the NFL. I would boycott the NFL if Tom Brady ends up anywhere else in the AFC. Greenwich, Greenwich, Connecticut, where home of Triple H. Go to. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So uh, it's pretty close to Stanford. Gotcha. Well, yeah, because look up Grin- Grin, as she says, call it. Look up that to Foxborough. If it's longer than 45 minutes, I don't know. Well, it depends if it's... It is three hours away. Oh, so that is far. Uh, It's... Cl- <coughs> so if you look at the map here. Unless he's going to Philly. 
Greenwich is down, kind of by Scranton. 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 Oh, so that's not even so. How, so that's not even really that close. So to he's Boston, gonna go work for Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Tom Brady's working for Dunder Mifflin. I could get behind that. He's I replacing Michael like, Scott. You know what? It's cl- Michael Scott's got to move on. It's, he's almost closer to the Pennsylvania area. Well, look how close which, he is to New York. Oh shit! Stop! Just he's not going to the Giants. No. <laughs> He's not going to the Giants. Would, He's not going to the Jets. It'd be funny He's not though. Going to the Bills. Just to have him do it. I would buy a Tom Brady Jets jersey. <laughs> okay, but honestly, if you think about it, let's just go crazy here. Let's say he does go to the Giants. Yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about Joe Judge. I have heard a lot of good things about Joe Judge. Oh, yeah, he was a special yeah. teams for New England, wasn't he? Yeah, he's going to get Saquon. He can make Sterling Shepard look good. He's going to have Evan Ingram. The only problem is I can see that <coughs> offensive line's not very really good. <coughs> But no, he was Nate Nate oh, but Nate, he was, yeah, Nate Soldier was a New England Patriot. And then, and then the Giants are going to draft a lineman, and then they're going to improve their defense. And, and I think well. there's going to be a couple hitting free agency this year. Giants, oh man. Yeah, but why would you go from, but like, I'm not would, comparing these two, why would you go to Eli, to Tom Brady, like, you know, you have Daniel Jones. He, here's why Tom oh, Brady, that's right, they have Daniel here's Jones. why Tom Brady goes to the Giants. What team's beating Tom Brady in the Super Bowl? The that's Giants. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Or, oh, well, yeah. he's he's also, like I said, he's kind of close to Pennsylvania there. He'd go for the Eagles. Which Steelers, made a maybe? No, he could go to the Steelers. Down. No, I, I forgot. Big I for- Ben's retiring. I feel bad for Daniel Jones. I literally just forgot about Daniel Jones, even though he's actually pretty decent. Yeah. I mean, but... Give Daniel Jones a year to develop. He, Another year. Another year. <laughs> he starts half the year, and now you're benched. Again. I mean, look at <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo. Real confidence yeah, looks like the next Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, look at Jimmy Garoppolo, though. Like, he was the backup in New England for three years. Like, yeah, but he was also I, I like saw, a second round pick, so, like, he was expecting, like. I, I saw a thing about Jimmy Garoppolo uh, that was comparing him to Aaron Rodgers. Jimmy Garoppolo and Aaron Rodgers end the league at the same age. They both sat three years under the under a good quarterback, and then Aaron Rodgers won his first Super Bowl at the same age as Jimmy G is now. Oh, well, Jimmy G's. So are you rooting for get. Jimmy G then? No, go Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Casey's probably gonna win anyway. I don't think we'll get to that. We'll get to that at the end of the show. True. All right. Next we have. Who the fuck is that? Exactly. We got McGregor killing oh Cowboys. Oh, they're so crazy. If you paid $65 for that fight, Blood, like, so sorry. get your money the back. The three limbs went on and on, and then... It was just, it Man, was so they just crazy. hyped it up so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was so good. 40 seconds. It was, it was awesome. Like, I was sitting there, me and my buddies, we went to, like, this little kickback. It's just, we all watched the fight, okay? Right. They, had it all, they actually had paid for the pay-per-view. I didn't pay for a thing, but they oh, all good, paid good, for good. the pay-per-view. They had it on the TV, the big TV. They had right. connected their laptop. Right. The, the TV went out, like, for some reason. So we're like, crap, crap. So we, like, all got to the front. I'm, like, shoving people out of the way to see in the front. And all of a sudden, all I see is Cowboy Cerrone's on the ground already. McGregor's just punching the daylights out. <laughs> and I'm like, no. I'm like, there's no way that he can lose in 40 seconds or, like, 30 seconds. And then, boom. Yeah. I was so hyped up. Oh, I thought it was crazy. Oh, it was, I was awesome. Like, oh. I, I, was so, I was rooting for McGregor, too, so I was like... See, I, wa- I, I figured McGregor would win, but I was just like, come on, cowboy. Just, well, Riley, just that'd be a great way to ride off in the sunset, beating McGregor. Yeah. Uh, but Wait, obviously, it's... losing to McGregor in 40 seconds is another oh, way man. to That's a, yeah, off. when you're known as one of the best strikers in UFC history. Yeah. And you don't even get a strike in. What happens is you get striked on. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. It was funny. I saw this thing on um, YouTube and it was like Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone highlights. I'm just like, what? The whole fight, basically? Yeah. Well, if you watch the, like, it was on Twitter like 10 seconds after the fight over and everybody showed the full fight because it's under a minute. Right, exactly. Which is. That's where I watched it. Yeah. I think I, I, think I saw it on Instagram or Twitter and I was like, oh, yeah. okay, that was it. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's that? Time. All right, so you're talking about prelims. So Macy Barber is fighter, right? This shit was crazy. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> during the fight, she got the round started, the second round started. She got punched, but her knee gave out on her and she fell to the ground. Basically, that was the fight 
she lasted the whole fight, which is good for her. Like, you go. Yeah. But, yeah. um, at the end of the second round, some dude came in there and felt her leg and then told it, like, felt it all up and then told the ref, she has a partial ACL tear. It's fine. Oh, my. It's you fine. You can go on. I right, can go. Whatever. And I'm like, <coughs> what? You stop. They've stopped other fights for far less. Oh, yeah. yeah like that out. cut that everybody was talking about not even that long ago. Yeah. But you're going to let somebody fight with a partially, partially torn AC. In a and, then, and then after the fight, where after she has it checked out, it's a complete ACL tear. So it means she's so like, cheaper uh, and more is staying in right. the fight. So, like, uh, where's the line go? Where are you going to draw the line? I guess once you do tear your ACL, though, there's not much you can do. Like it's, yeah. But then you're kind of defenseless as a fighter, so... But obviously, if it's a partial ACL tear, like, before the next round starts, you would think, hey, instead of having it get worse, at least you could stop it now and be back in a shorter Ooh. time frame, you know? Right. Just a just a heads up in Major League Baseball. If you go follow Size Squad Pod, oh, oh, yeah, you can get all your news and stuff there. Uh, King Felix has signed a minor league contract with the Atlanta Braves, yeah, which will eventually end up turning to a uh, major league contract. Yeah, I'm actually kind of sad. Uh, the deal's worth a uh, mil. Worth a mil. So, oh yeah, so you already literally what that does is basically so you don't have to use an MLB con like an MLB. Yeah, just signed to a minor league deal. The Twins did that for. Bartolo Colon a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, exactly. And then they're just like, okay, we'll just bring you up. I actually like that signing by the Twins. Uh, Josh Donaldson. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that later. Oh, we are. Okay, good. Good yes. stuff. Good stuff. Oh, well, it's kind of sad he left uh, Seattle, though. Oh, yeah, he's a legend there. He's a Hall of Famer. They retired his number in like a couple few, years. A couple years. Uh, what do we got next here? Uh, now we're on NBA updates. All right, so. Uh, Breaking rumor news coming out of the Size Club podcast real quick. The 76ers Sixers, Sixers. and the Lakers are interested are, in trading for Derrick Rose. They are aggressively pursuing him. Wow. As we speak. I would so love the deal may be done by the time you're hearing this podcast. I would love. I that. hope Derrick Rose gets his ass stuck on Detroit. This is what he gets for going to Detroit. No. What do you mean? He's like the... Ever since he left Minnesota, I've been so upset. And I know, but like, I still want him to be successful. No, I want him... I want him to get stuck on Detroit for another year, and then next year they can trade for him. After Anthony Davis is gone from the Lakers. Of course. I'm tired of super teams. I'm tired of super teams. I don't want to see Derrick Rose go to the Lakers and team up with LeBron and AD. Super teams are the new... NBA. No, Kawhi Leonard yeah, fixed this. this. Kawhi Coach Leonard you. fixed all this. Okay, going, but I, I don't think Derrick Rose going to the Lakers would make him a super team. It would definitely make him title favorites again if they're not already. Yeah, I think they are. But, I, but the thing is, I think he'd be made, I don't think he would make that much of an impact if he went to like he wouldn't make much if they went to the Sixers. Like he would be impactful, but like it wouldn't change their title odds. I don't think. Well, who would yeah. the Sixers be trading? I don't know. They'd probably give up a pick and then a bench player. Because Detroit's just going to tank the rest of the year. I guess. Probs. I don't know. But, yeah. There's been a couple other trades. Or Al Horford. Hey. True. They're, they're, well, they're talking about trading Al Horford yeah. because they realize, wait, we have two centers and we're not making this work. Yeah. Robert Covington's another guy that teams are monitoring. The Lakers and, coincidentally, the 76ers yep. are in on the And it seems Covington. like both of those those teams seem to be, like, hand-in-hand hand with everybody. Two we'll Wolves are aggressively pursuing the uh, D-Lo again. D-Lo again. Yeah, like, I, aggressively. Like I, they're upping their offer. Oh, they've upped their offer like three or four times, though. But that's because, and I, I need like the reports are are coming out more and more now that right. the plan is for the Warriors is next year once Clay and Steve are back, they're gonna trade D-Lo and whatever their pick ends up, which could potentially be the first overall pick mm-hmm. next year, they're gonna package those together and get another superstar. So you could trade I for could somebody. I could see them doing that. You know? I told you, it's all gonna, it's all gonna come together. Giannis is gonna go yeah. to the Warriors because he'll be a free. I agent. actually had, I had <laughs> an idea about that. They will acquire him via a sign and trade. D'Angelo yeah. Russell and the first overall pick will go to Milwaukee for Giannis. That way, because obviously, like, it'll be kind of the Jimmy Butler thing, where instead of Jimmy Butler going straight to Miami. 
the Hill, Sri sign, then get traded, you know? Right. That's how I think it'll go down with Giannis going to uh, Golden State. I don't know, but if you do get rid of Curry's coming back in March. He already said that. He confirmed it. Yeah, but they're not going to be playing for anything. He, he should, shouldn't, but he's, he's going to. He's, oh, stuff. He's sick of sitting on the bench and cheering on well, his Well, I'd team. believe it, but, like, it's just pointless because I'd rather have the first overall pick. Right. You know? Right, but, I mean, you'll still probably get it, right? Well, not if you have Steph Curry. Cause Steph Curry's a guy that could easily win you 15, 20-plus games. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's that's what I think is gonna happen with D'Angelo Russell in that first overall pick. I would it wouldn't shock me by any any stretch of the imagination. Hey, maybe D Russ for Cat or straight up trade. No, straight see up. that's the, that's the problem is everybody's talking <coughs> about how in order to get D'Angelo Russell to the Timberwolves it's gonna require Cat. But the problem oh, is, I don't think is so. the Timberwolves won't give up Cat because the whole point of trying to get D'Angelo Russell is for Cat to be yeah. happy. That's right. the whole point. Oh, Devin Booker is another yeah. name to watch. Uh, the Lakers are pursuing him. I did see that. In wow. a Kyle Kuzma, Devin Booker swap. I would, oh. I would quite enjoy that. Yeah. I, I, I just, would, I I just questioned like, how he'd fit with that team, though. I don't. He's, is he a shooting guard or a point guard? Well, that's the thing is, people are saying he's a point guard right Perfect. now. Perfect. We need a point guard. He's but point that's guard the thing now. is, I've always yeah. known him as a shooting guard. Yeah. Oh, well, he's All a point guard. He's a point guard now. LeBron, LeBron's going to tell him, you're a point see, guard now. But, but that's also what worries me, is LeBron does not play good with young players. No, he never has. And that's what worries me about Devin Booker. It's true. And is Devin Booker, the thing with, also with Devin well, Booker is where he's at now in Phoenix. He just is like the man. Like he's yeah. But I'll say this though: Devin Booker has experience with the U.S. Men's National Team, and whenever, yeah, which is that's which true. LeBron does always. He has always buddy buddy with all those guys. At least tries to be buddy buddy. Yeah. LeBron doesn't necessarily like younger guys, but LeBron's a guy where it's like, okay, I'll put up with it if it means I get to win a championship. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, uh, yeah, LeBron just likes to have the veterans because of. Well, yeah. His championship mentality, like he needs the guys who know how to play smart I mean, basketball. It, yeah, it's worked. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. But yeah, um, I don't think there's any other big trade speculations. Uh, well, not speculations at this point. I don't think. I know Al Horford, like Noah said, there the 76ers are looking to trade him because they're figuring it out now that Al Horford and Joel Embiid together just doesn't work. But I knew it wasn't going to. Um. The twin the Timberwolves, they did make a trade. Jeff T goes back to Atlanta to back yeah, up yeah. Trey Young. It's not really gonna do anything. I mean, it was kind of one of those pointless trades, I feel. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. I said that I don't know like it was one of those trades that didn't have to happen. Right. But unless the Hawks feel like their young guys can blow up next year and then they have a veteran in Jeff T, but that's kind of all I could think of. Yeah. Because they're obviously not a playoff team. Well even just like because it was literally just players like literally just players. I think maybe one second round pick was included, and that was it. Because then the Timberwolves gave up Trevon Graham, which he's actually a pretty good player for the Timberwolves. People that don't really watch the Timberwolves, like, just know more about basketball. Trevon Graham was a good player. He was a good defensive guy. He could play the three or the four. Uh, A couple other rumors. Uh, The Raptors are possibly shopping around Kyle, Larry Marcusol, and Serge Ibaka. And I did Ooh. see they might go after Robert Covington as well. Wow. And the Heat are just, the Heat are just kind of looking. They haven't really targeted a specific. Yeah, person. I'm the Heat. I don't really mess. I honestly like don't like don't mess with the roster if you don't have to. Right. Unless heard, something so perfect drops in your lap. Yeah, I heard Chris Paul is on their radar, like kind of. Um, God, there's another team. Yeah. The NBA, oh, it'll obviously, everything will start crumbling like a week before the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. Or, just or it'll just, yeah, what's, what's going to happen, we're going to hype everything up and then nothing's going to happen. Yeah, that's which what, is very true. That's what, like, like the NFL this year, we're going to hype up on this stuff <laughs> yeah. and nothing's going to happen. Yeah. That, that's very true. Well, uh, if you look at the NBA right now, in the East. So you want to give an updated NBA standings? Yeah. Thing, just for some fun little... It's uh, literally the fact. Lakers in the West, Bucks in the East. That's about well, it. Fun fact. <laughs> well, there is Chicago some... is now the ninth seed in the East. Ooh. Zach Levine said he's taking them to the playoffs. They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. So. Yeah, they're 16-28 <laughs> overall. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, look at... Or, like, just look at Brooklyn, who's 18-24. and 24. <laughs> They're only two games behind. True. 
And you know, yeah, I'm going to pull up the NBA. Although it does suck, because right now the Bulls are in the middle of playing Milwaukee. Well, put it this way. The difference between the 6th and the 7th seed in the East is 8 games. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. uh, Pacers are doing really good. Yeah, Pacers are honestly a sleeper. They really are. Yeah. They're going to be a deadly team once Oladipo comes back. Very true. Utah's on a tear right now. Yes, Utah. Utah's on what a ten game winning streak? Oh, they were on a ten game winning streak. But that team's really good. I even said it before the year started. That team's gonna have one of the better defenses. I think Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley, and then um, who's the other guy? Um, the the white guy. So the the white guy. Um, Utah. Utah. Oh, you mean Rudy? No, not Rudy. There's another guy. Donovan Mitchell. No, it's not Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell's not white. Sorry. Sorry, no, sorry. Where? Damn, Dallas is the fifth seed. <clears throat> yeah, Luca's kind of cooled off a little. Just a little Oh, bit. Bojan. Bogdanovich. Yes, Bogdanovich. Yep, Bogdanovich. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, and Joe Ingles even, too. I mean, Joe Ingles. He's white. Like, yeah, yep, yep. No, Utah's got a solid team. I don't know if they're yes. good enough to beat. Oh, and they traded for Jordan Clarkson. That was something we never talked about. Oh, that's right. They traded for Jordan Clarkson. Ever since they traded for him, their team has really stepped up. So, <laughs> and honestly, like if you think about it, if their playoff path, if they have to play like Dallas or OKC, then the next round will have to play like one of the LA teams in a seven game series. They're gonna make it work for it. Yeah, they're gonna make it work for it. Well, it's just like you, like you said, like they're a really good defensive team. Like Mike Conley is arguably the best. One of the best defending guards, and Rudy Gobert is easily the best defensive center in the league. I mean, oh yeah, and it's like their offense sometimes falls short, but then you got nights where Ingles goes off, where Donovan yeah. Mitchell has a good game. You know, he's still the veteran Mike Conley. So yeah, it's, it's really sad to see that like Minnesota's towards the bottom of the heap after being like. It's it's sad, but it was kind of predicted. Like it's just the way the Timberwolves, because it was just like the Timberwolves last year. The Timberwolves at one point were like the four seed in the start West. Start off West. hot, cool yeah. off real quick. Yeah. Uh, one team that's doing surprisingly really good and is actually making a contender. They're in the eighth seed right now. Is the Grizzlies? They're eight and two in their last ten games. Job they is one a beast. Seven. Yeah. Seven straight. That's another really good defensive team that a lot of people saw. Like, people were talking about the Grizzlies, and the Grizzlies were smart because everybody was hoping the Grizzlies were going to buy out Andre Iguodala. It's a good right. thing they did it because that team is going to be deadly in the playoffs. Yeah, they're not going to be an, an easy out. Yeah. You know, you're going to have John Moran, Jaron Jackson, and then again, they're going to get better next year because let's say they do barely miss the playoffs. They're going to be a lottery team. They're going to have a chance to get another good draft pick. Yeah. They I mean, also have, like, the likes of like Jay Crowder to help out too. Oh yeah, and Jonas Memphis. Yeah. And Memphis doesn't have to pay for all these players yet, so they're up. So they're yeah. if they yeah. wanted to, if they were just like screw it, let's just go get a big time player to beef everything up. Let's let's do it. And yeah. they could easily. Go or right John down. Rand could just be a superstar himself, and he can carry. It I mean, he kind of is a superstar. He, right already, now. he already is carrying Memphis. He's in a lot rookie of, ways, of the so. year, easily. Oh, easily. Zion, hey, so. Zion makes his debut on uh, Wednesday. This Wednesday. 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 That yeah. was supposed to be yeah. last Thursday, though. Well, I haven't changed it yet, so no, it's, it's Wednesday. It's, it's Wednesday. It's confirmed. He's ready. Um, he's sleeping. He's falling asleep during the games. Obviously, he's ready to play. Yes. He's doing dunks and all sorts of. If it, he's on the shit. injury reports now, which means that you know he is. Yeah, like he's prepared. He's for ready. Uh, the the crazy thing is this happens during NXT and AEW, so I'm gonna have three screens. Watching all three just to see Zion's debut because you know you and, can't really miss it and probably get disappointed by it. Oh, I probably will, but I mean, here's the here's my thing is I kind of hope he has a disappointing first game because I hope the Zion hype dies because Zion the way that he played in college isn't gonna work in the NBA. Um, I disagree to an extent because a guy that physical. Because because Zion is already bigger than a lot of NBA players. He's yeah. not gonna. He, Zion's never gonna be a like a, a number one star. He's never gonna be a top ten or well maybe not top five player in the NBA. He's never gonna be that guy. He's a guy that can get you 20, 27 points a game. You know he'll put up thirty some nights because he's just gonna draw fouls. He's gonna be tough in the paint. He can shoot a three if he needs to. He's not a three point shooter, but he will if he needs to. I think he can be successful in the NBA. My thing, and I mentioned this before, is his weight. Because oh, yeah, so, and that's, yeah, that's what I was And if you listen to old episodes, if you go to the archives yeah. on the Side Squad pod, make sure to do that. I was saying if 
Zion doesn't lose weight, you got to think about trading him because then you're just going to get an injury prone. You're going to get a, an upgraded Greg Oden. Well, what and that's, I've heard that's where though, I was going with it. Like his style of play isn't going to work in the NBA because his career won't last won't long. Won't last long if he plays the way he did in college. He can be good in the sp- when he does play, but the question is always just going to be when is he going to play? Yeah. Well, what I've heard though is he he was working with the same dudes that switched the way that Joel Embiid was doing things. Right. To cause Joel Embiid to be less... Which is smart, but obviously Joel Embiid, the difference between Joel Embiid is Joel Embiid at least had height to him. Like right. Zion, Zion's obviously well, and, and Zion Embiid, gained seven more pounds Joel, of muscle, too. Right, and Joel Embiid sometimes doesn't <clears throat> give a crap. So. Yeah. Zion does. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. And yes, that is a jab at Joel Embiid. That's He's okay. We, we, we're soft. None of us are big fans of old Joel here. Yeah. Uh, the, I I actually saved the post that Kat made about him. I was like, I was raised by lions. Hashtag <laughs> bitch talk. Yeah. Uh, Forget. F- frick you, Joel. That yeah. was funny. Uh, all-star update. Uh, by the looks of it, Alex Caruso may make the list and Taco Paul is kind of on the edge of making it. But I sure hope they do. It'd be just so I cool. I love it. Again, the NBA is just going to be a boring losers, and they're not going to put my boy Alex or Taco. Alex moved up to number, I think, number four. What? No, he didn't. I think he's number Wait, four. You guys keep talking. I have to look up the NBA standings for the votes. See, here's the thing. I was against it like when I saw them, and I was pissed off that like they were even in consideration. But it's like Noah said last week, like... And because I don't, I like, I kind of forgot about like mm-hmm. being an all star literally means shit. It means like, nothing, like, absolutely nothing. Like the all star game isn't for anything. It's just yeah. They don't try anyway. Might as well spice it up by putting Alex or Taco Fall in there. Yeah. If Taco Fall enter the NBA All Star game, the crowd would lose their yeah. shit. Yeah. Like I said, even like put Taco in, him, literally just have him cherry pick the entire time. Have him score hundred um, points. Yeah, have oh him my just, god. Have him just sit under the basket the entire game <laughs> and just cherry pick. See how many points See, he can get. See, I would watch that. I would genuinely watch that. But it's not going to happen because the NBA is boring. And yeah. they actually take and ride their Fan game. voting actually ends today. So by the time this podcast releases, True. we'll have our actual lineup. So well, next week... What happens is is the fan voting ends today, but fan voting only counts for half... It counts for 0.5, right. and then NBA analysts get 0.25, and then mm-hmm. NBA... Um, it's either officials or commission, yep. or like... Uh, NBA people get the other two. Points. So the starters will be announced January twenty third. The draft is the sixth. Right? The yep. The reserves are announced the thirtieth. Drafts the sixth. The celebrity games the fourteenth. That's the game I'll be watching. Adam Sandler should be in it. He I know should. Brendan said it a couple weeks <laughs> yeah. ago. Adam Sandler. Uh, three point contest and stuff. Slam dunk contest, which John Morant oh, will not be in. Uh, is oh, the fifteenth, exactly. and then the all star game is the sixteenth. I don't know. Zach Levine's still on the border. I Crusoe's guess. number four right now, yeah. So it goes Luca, Harden, Dame, Caruso, Westbrook, Curry, Mitchell, Booker, okay. Russell, All things aside, ja. if you want to put Caruso ja Morant and in the number Taco 10. Fall in the off that's fine. It's bullshit Steph Curry is getting votes. Oh, yes. No. That, yes. That part's bullshit. Yes. Steph no, Curry Tacos is... fell to number 11. No. So we're probably not going to see Taco... Steph Curry oh, no, 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 has, just has not played in number like six. Taco! Yeah. Is he number six or number 11? Number six. Uh, so in the front court, then it goes LeBron, Davis, Kawhi, PG, uh, Joe, Joe Kick, Mello, Mello number six. I like, wouldn't mind I like that, Mello like that. Like Crispus, uh, Cat, Ingram, Dwight Howard. I like seeing Dwight Howard in there. I don't. Not at all. Just I'm number more, ten. Just throw. No, just I have no idea how the whites there. get back to the All Star. No, game. I really, th- I think to spice up every All Star game, you should literally just have everyone vote for All Star. Like NBA should just be like, all right, everyone vote. Right. Well, these were these guys in the All Star game. Yeah. Uh, and then East would be Eastern be- Conference, it goes Trey on Kyrie, Kemba. Derek Rose, number four, guys. Let's go. That's how you know this list is lit. Let's go. Uh, Kyle Lowry, Zach Levine, number six, Jalen Brown, Ben Simmons, Bradley Beal, and Fred Van Vliet. Seriously, if this were these are the All Star rosters, I would love every second of them. I like this one too. So it goes Giannis, Siakam, Embiid, Jimmy Buckets, Jason Tatum, Taco, 
Bam Abito, Abo Adebayo, Gordon yeah, Hayward, Demontis Sabonis, Sabonis. Dude, the and Andre Drummond. Or Andre, yeah, Andre Drummond. So, I mean, and that's the current as of... As Wait, of yesterday. I just realized the Thunder in the West, right? Yeah. So that means if somehow Chris Paul could get to the All-Star game with Carmel Anthony and LeBron James, that would, the first, that would be the first time LeBron could play with both play with both Chris Paul and Carmel Anthony on the same All-Star hey. team. Yo. Bring bring Dwayne Wade out of retirement for one Bring the banana week. bowl. Bring it all Give back. Give the banana bowl one shot in the NBA All-Star <laughs> game. Just make turn the NBA All-Star game into... That team against you know everybody else. That would be a good time. All but right. Yeah. Do you think anybody's been slept on? Who's the biggest snub from that list? Me. Probably Demontis Sabonis. Like I know you said his name. Right. Dude's a fucking baller. He, yeah, I really don't have any issues really of like where people stand. Me. The only, or I guess maybe one person is Brandon Ingram. The guy oh, been, no, Brandon Ingram, should, without a doubt, should be an all-star. No question, no question. He's asked. been balling. He's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you'll be able to see that here in a couple days. As On the same release as this podcast, during that day you'll get it, so can't wait. Uh, next we'll go to the NHL with some hockey, Brendan. Brendan, take Brendan, take it away. Your time to shine, buddy. So, uh, so the Blackhawks talk- are doing really bad right now. Uh, <laughs> actually, the Blackhawks are only three games behind the wild card because of the shakeup with Golden State and uh, Phoenix is also Blackhawks on a five game win streak. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, no, the Blackhawks have been on a five game win streak. Uh, I'm actually kind of concerned for this next matchup though because we're playing against the Panthers, which actually has former Blackhawks. Stanley Cup winning coach Joel Quinville, mm. or Joel Quinville, I should say, not Joel. <laughs> um, Joel Quinville and the Panthers have kind of been like up and down all season because they have like some spurts of talent and a good coach. Nice. But um, anyways, I wasn't going to talk about the Blackhawks. What? Well, you just did. Oh, uh, that's because Duncan <laughs> brought it up. I was my plan was not to. But, uh, so obviously the Golden Golden Knights uh, coach got fired. They hired a new one. As mid-season. you can find on the Side Squad podcast, Instagram, and Twitter, and Facebook. Yo. Breaking the news before all major sports outlets. But it was very interesting uh, what's actually happened since then. So they were on the cusp of the playoffs with Calgary, mm-hmm. but now... Calgary kind of went on a tear, and they're now third in the Pacific. Oh. So, but granted, we don't have to worry about the playoffs for another couple months. So you have like about thirty games, twenty thirty games. Poor Detroit, the, five game losing streak. Well, Detroit only has Bertuzzi, and hey, that's about it. The Blue Jackets are eight and two of their last ten, and they've won their last five. Well. Blue Jackets are at the top of the wild card in the East. See, Good. it's funny. You keep talking about these teams, which I used to hate because they used to be in the West, but they got moved to the East. But yet, Nashville is more East than both of those teams. Well, not more East than Columbus. Ohio? Yeah, because it, it's more Eastern Ohio. But Nashville is still in the West and <laughs> is more East. It's funny. The Why map is very that? weird, but when it comes to the NHL... Why are the LA Kings doing so bad? Um, that that's actually a very interesting question. Because, like, they still have players from their Stanley Cup roster that were, like, really key. Like, mm-hmm. best defenseman of, in the league for, like, three years, Drew Doughty. They yeah. still have, like... Mark Doughty. They still yeah. have, like, Jeff Carter and... Oh uh, no, he might have retired actually. Oh, Hold well. on, let's pee. Well, uh, pee real quick, the Golden Knights. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, sir. Our Instagram says trade alert for King Felix signing with the Braves. 
Wait, what does it say? It says trade alert. Oh. Oh, well. Yeah, it, 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 did say, it did say that. It's why I was like, oh. But uh, the Golden Knights, they fired their head coach. Oh. Georges Jalon. Yeah. I forgot the name of the guy that they hired. According to the record, For, I think, not I think they're only got it the intern coach. How are the Wild doing? Um, you <laughs> they started up. sucking again. They are last in the central division. After Good. going on like a straight. Yeah, but of, uh, it's funny it? for it's, it's, for like the first time in forever, the central division's stronger than the Pacific division because the Wild are last in the central division, but still underneath them in the playoff rankings is San Jose, who was in the Stanley the Cup Sharks. playoffs last year, Anaheim, who has. The, been in and out of the playoffs the past the few years, and the Kings, who are only a couple of years out from winning a Stanley Cup. Wait, what's the team of the Anaheims? The Ducks. The Ducks. Oh, I was right. I thought I was going to They be used so to be the Anaheim there. Mighty Ducks. Oh, man. I'm so happy with myself. All right. Uh, anything special going on in the NHL um, at the moment? The, you talked about Columbus. Columbus uh, Blue Jackets. The second star of the week is actually Columbus Blue Jackets rookie goalie. Uh, he kind of went on a tear. If we actually want to talk about the stars of the week, I might talk about the Blackhawks a little bit here. But oh my God, first Patrick star Kane? Is that was not saying? Patrick Kane. Oh, it's John my Ovechkin? It's Jonathan Tace. He's oh, third toes. star. But <laughs> Ovi is star number one of the week because he had a game winner and like... 13 points in only three games because he does just dumb stuff like that because he's <laughs> Alex Ovechkin. I said I hated him a, like a month ago. I don't hate him. I don't know why you would. Pretty much the only people that should hate Alex Ovechkin are Penguins fans. I know something about him this week. Oh, what? He tied Mario Lemieux on the all-time goal list after scoring a hat yep. trick. Wow. That, that's wow. why I knew his name from this week. So how many far away is he from Wayne Gretzky? Probably like a hundred. Oh right? my god, it's crazy. But Alex Ovechkin still has a few years left in his career. Yeah, but he's not catching the great one. No. Like, he has to... Connor rock. Jesus is coming for all their tails, though. Actually, this year he hasn't been a, as much of a goal scorer. He's been more of a... More of a Connor McDavid. Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he's been more assists, so he'll probably climb the points ranks. Right, right. Uh, speaking of points, Finding Patrick points Kane uh, reached... Point number 1,000 Yee. this week. Good stuff. Shout out to you. Best American-born hockey player in NHL history. There's no cap. Um, Whatever Noah said. He said no cap. No cap. No, no cap. cap. But Stop it, capping. I was like, you guys have never heard of no cap? No, I hear it all the time. Oh, okay. I just don't know what he's talking about. So, so <laughs> kind of funny. You know, how, you know how when it came to playoff time in the NFL this last year, we were like, yo, this is a little weird how things are working hours. with, like... 200 goals by now. Oh, my God. He's not catching Ovi or <laughs> the great one. He's 200 goals by now. Anyways, Brendan? Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, no, especially only when he <laughs> averages, like... Like 40, 50 goals a year. That's Which is still really good. He would have to play ten four all times still. Yeah, he would oh, still wow. have to play like four more years. Oh. Well, still. Ovi's great. He'll, he'll end top five. So, oh, I, yeah. I didn't yeah. interrupt you, but no, I just good. looked it up. Um, in the Eastern Conference, we actually have a really interesting thing. So, Metropolitan Division, yeah. always way more competitive than the Atlantic Division. Um, it's just crazy. To where the point where the Flyers are out of the playoffs. Already? Or not like out of the playoffs, but they're not in the bubble currently. Okay. Like they're not in the wild card spot. Okay. Philadelphia. With, with a 58, when the Panthers are in the playoffs with the third seed in the Atlantic division with 57 points. How is that possible? Cheers. And that is because Philadelphia plays in the Metropolitan Division. Oh, cheers. So does cheers, Columbus, and so does Carolina. Oh, cheers. Oh, okay. Because then that makes it 71, which is Washington, 67, which is Pittsburgh, 61, cheers. which is Islander, <laughs> which is uh, the New York Islanders, and then 60, which is Columbus. Cheers. 59, which is Carolina. Oh, no, cheers. What? But then what the what? bunch of jerks aren't doing well this year? What? What? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> I'm just dead. <laughs> So who's winning the Stanley Cup? Uh, honestly, it's probably gonna be Boston. Go like, go it, Bruins! It is, it is way Bruce. too early to say, but it's probably gonna be Boston. Well, David Pasternak is a beast. Oh my God, he's been kind of like he's been pretty solid. He's in probably Boston in the past few years, but this year he's just like, I'm gonna be an MVP. I was gonna say, is, is, he, gonna, is he probably the MVP of the league right now? Probably. Ah. Uh, Probably. Well, he's just been putting up stupid numbers. Do you see this year happening like last year in the playoffs, where like all the good teams get bounced in the first two rounds? No. And then all of a sudden, like you have like fourth and fifth seeds competing to the Stanley fine. Cup Finals. I thought it was no. a good ten. No, no I bet. Dogs this I, year. I bet Boston's going to take things. They'll take. Who are they gonna play? Who are they gonna play? Games. <laughs> um. Well, there's a couple options for that. Yeah, but it's probably more than likely going to be like the Dallas Stars. If you look at it right now, it's more than likely going to be St. Louis. The Blues. The Blues. Fuck the Blues. I yeah. Hate the Blues. Hey. We I want like the, the Oilers. Play to Gloria. Make it. But it's go Seattle. Well, like the thing is, yeah. the Blues have the second highest. Like, so the, the Blues have like the second highest uh, points totals for <laughs> winning. Uh, oh. Tied with Boston, actually. Number one is actually Washington. Oh, Washington oh. Wizards. No. <laughs> Warriors. No. Washington Bullets. No. Was- Was- Wait, are we talking about the na- the teams in Washington? The high team in Washington? We're, we're talking about the Red high team in Washington. It's the Washington Capitals, right? Yes, it's the Washington Capitals. You guys How didn't you- know that? I was like, you guys actually didn't know that? I, I'm just, just, I, I just, still know what we're talking about. I'm just shooting at Washington. <laughs> I know that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Easy Defenders. Yes. But, no, it's actually, like, really crazy to see. So, you know how I was talking about how Philadelphia currently right now is not in the playoffs? Oh, yeah, yeah. I need 58. that pop figure if you want to find it for me as the mascot, by the way. Just shout it. Gritty? Yeah, at Side Squad Pod. DM us. I'll buy uh, it from you. So, they have a 58, right? Not even yes. kidding. Number one in the Pacific uh, Division in the West. Michael Phelps. <laughs> Oh my God, is stop. <laughs> at 58 points, the same amount of points as Philadelphia. Oh, wow. So what you're saying is is it's kind of like the NFC East this year where they're going to get a higher seed even though they're statistically a shittier team. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah, I'll cool. drink to that. Oh. Cheers, bro. Drink well, and, and it's not even like seeding. Like, Philadelphia Philadelphia made this the playoffs <laughs> just because they're in the East. Thanks, man. Oh, it's kind of like how the NBA has been with kind of the West kind of being more of the powerhouse. Okay, true. I thought okay. they, uh... And being more competitive and then that. the East. Oh. But it's that, flip-flopped they, where the West is less competitive like except for the Central Division. The, but the Central Division right still has a pretty <laughs> wide spread because you have 68, which is St. Louis, 62, which is um, Colorado, 58, which is hey. the Stars. Who obviously have been pretty solid and can comes? be dangerous, and that's the Central Division. And then the wild card is the Golden Knights Central Division, Coyotes Central Division. <laughs> but honestly, the Coyotes are... Wait, are the Coyotes in the Central Division? I thought that was next year when they move over. Mm, I thought that they were in the Central Division. Already, I thought they moved because I know they're in the Pacific, but they're planning to move into the Central because Seattle's no, moved. no, they are in the Pacific. I okay. say no, because <laughs> yeah, they are going to move. That's what but I was you thinking. Can't yeah. teach so that. Arizona's still doing good though because we knew we were talking about that earlier. How, yeah, but it's funny because the Pacific then is 58, 57, 57, 57. Oh, so it's tight, yeah, 57, 57, and then nobody, it's all Central teams, and then it's San Jose with 46. Oh, wow. Oh, San Jose's doing... Wow, that's, yeah, San Jose's doing garbage. That is sad. So uh, Nashville are... dropped off. They were once a two-seed. Now they're missing the playoffs behind the Blackhawks. Oofta. Oofta. So. Uh, shout out to NHLShop.com. They have a seven-foot gritty inflatable. What? It's currently $50 off. 50 How much is it? $115. Worth it. Is that with the Worth it. Yeah. It, 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 it was originally 160 Uh, I think we need to pitch in together for the size squad pod. It's seven feet tall. 
So that's awesome. You can't teach we'll put on that. Sport. You, you can't that. teach that. Yeah. Uh, but we probably should keep things a moving. Yeah. Well, let's get rolling here. So the WNBA has struck a new deal with the CBA. Uh, pretty cool that they Good are for them. now getting all happy. those extra. You'll well, actually get to see benefits. a Minnesota championship on TV soon. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried that all this new collective bargaining agreement, I feel like the WNBA is going to be bankrupt in a few years. Oh, it probably will be. Which is sad, but... but... Well, it's, it sucks, because it's such a good thing, but at the same time, it sucks. Right. Because I, you right. know it doesn't have the support to sustain No, and that's just it. Like, like, you know, it, like, in all seriousness, I absolutely am totally okay with this, you know, because if I have ever daughter one day, I want her to have role models look up to to play sports. Like, that's awesome. Great for the WNBA. But there's also just that dub, like that thing where I'm just like, oh, but I just know financially they may not be able to do it. And it sucks. And yeah. I wish it would, but it's just not. Yeah. I don't know. I think we as members of the Side Squad Pod, which you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All of it. Tinder. Uh, on Tinder? They were on Tinder. Yeah, we are. We swipe. Is it? What's the good one? Right. We swipe right on everybody unless you look creepy. <laughs> if you if you have a dog picture, you get the super light. I say if I if, if I swipe right on Side Squad Pod and I don't get a match, I'm gonna be upset, guys. <laughs> just saying. I, I think Duncan has his listed under male though. Yeah, but I, I we accept everybody. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying probably won't pop up on. No you never speed. know. You Fair don't enough. Know. Um, yeah, WNBA. But we can rep. Our WNBA ladies, like I'm a seventeen dollars. I'm all of a sudden a diehard uh, Chicago that. Sky fan. I've always liked Elena Deladon, though. That was always she's always one of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. Well, like if you look at, I mean, it it really doesn't help that the Lynx have had like three of the greatest women basketball players in. Women basketball. What do you history. mean? Minnesota doesn't have shit to celebrate. Give us something. Let us you have, have the links. You have the links. The like, links exactly. are amazing. My well, they were. Were insane. They were. All their players got them. Yeah, but they're still playing good. They, they're getting young players, too. They, yeah. they signed the and number one. And you still one. have, um, what is it, Christmas? Yeah. You remember her? She was really good and could shoot the threes in, in, in 2K. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, we're excited to see what's going on there. There was actually another basketball thing we forgot to talk about earlier that's actually pretty important. Chandler Parsons' career might be over after he got into an accident. With yes, a drunk prayer, prayers up from Chandler Parsons. Do not drink and drive, guys. Yes, seriously. Seriously. Like, seriously. Chandler Parsons did not drink and drive. No, he yes, was hit by no. else that he hit him. Was hit by right, the person that hit him got charged with a DUI. Glad they did because that sucks. Like that yeah. really sucks. Yeah, heard, permanent injuries too. I heard he might have permanent brain damage from this. Oh. Something, yeah. Um, he had a something happened um, with his hip too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was it was. Bad. What really sucks is it can happen to anybody, you know. Yeah. So don't drink and drive. No, definitely not. But yeah, yeah. so prayers up for Chandler Parsons. Hope nothing but the best. Yes, absolutely. Uh, maybe someday he can return to the NBA not as a player but as like a. Contributor, if he's yeah, okay, like wants to do something, but uh, better note or a happier note, I should say. Let's talk about the Royal Rumble this Sunday, live on the WWE Network. I'm excited because Royal Rumble is my very favorite view, but I'm also Same. not excited because Roman Reigns is gonna win the Royal Rumble. Ooh, uh, Brock Lesnar's entering number one though. Right, but he's not gonna win it. And his championship's not on the line for some reason. Exactly, like, so you know he's not gonna win it. That's true. No. This is what's going to happen. Matt. Brock's going to go the distance, and then Roman's going to eliminate him to win the Rumble. I'd cheer for that, actually. I would not, because you know what's going to happen. They're going to put him over the Fiend. Uh, oh, oh. Shit, no. I don't want that. I don't uh, want that at all. Oh, that could be bad. That could No, you already know that would be so disastrous. Uh, booze. Booze the musical would just be... I think it'd be pretty cool to see Matt Riddle or Keith Lee, somebody like that, eliminate. Yeah, I know, and I totally Brock. agree. Like, use that pedestal. Hell, get right. Drew McIntyre the fucking elimination. There you go. Like, I don't even care. Not Roman. Roman does not need that. No, I could see them not giving it to Roman, actually. No, just I could too. Just because it's so. Everybody says it's giving it to Roman, so. 
Right. Throw a curveball. You can still have Roman face the Fiend. Just oh. have a different route for it, you know? Damn. Like, Who do you think's going to win the Rumble? Well, not Roman Reigns. I'm thinking it's going to be somebody, like, not necessarily expected. Uh, I would say Lars Sullivan if I didn't hate him so much in the allegations that recently come out. Miz is with Morrison now. They're tag team again. I think it, I think, uh, like, what would you say? Like a sleeper pick? Kofi Kingston. Oh, I would love that. Give, have, give it to him. Have him eliminate Brock. All for revenge. For revenge. Boom. Story And then he go- Mania 2. Oh! I'd love that. Uh, another match is Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin in a strap, ma- or no, in a false count anywhere match. I think that's going to be, it better be the end of the rivalry. Uh, it's in the baseball team's Chase Field. It's actually at Chase Field, so it's able to go wherever right. if you want it to. Or is, is, it in, or is it at Minute Maid Park? And that was in Houston. Oh, uh, that's in Houston. It's at... Yeah, Royal Rumble. Is it in Houston? Royal Rumble is in... Yeah, in Houston. So Minute Maid, yeah. Oh. Chase was last year, I think. But, uh... Yeah. Well, how much you want to bet they're going to get a joke about the Astros? Oh, it's going to... Corey Graves is going to go off. Yeah, Corey Graves will say something stupid. Not stupid, it'll be really funny. Yeah. And oh. I don't like Corey Graves, but I kind of hope he does. Yeah. I, I, I'm i iffy about Corey Graves. It depends on what he says, but... I don't know. I just think he's arrogant and annoying. Oh, definitely, but I mean, I just sometimes... Don't like arrogant, I just don't like arrogant people. But oh, so very... you don't like Baron Corbin? I don't like Baron Corbin. Love Baron well, Corbin. Well, that... <laughs> Do not like so Corbin. good. He's like... MJF is number one heel right now, but I think Baron Corbin is number two. Hmm. Uh... The Universal Championship match, The Fiend, will face Daniel Bryan in a strap match. A what? A strap match. So what you do is you, you're attached to a leather strap. Oh, so The Fiend. Wasn't Triple H in one of yep. those? And a With the great Ali, wasn't it? Something like that. So you're, each one of your hands is attached to the yeah, strap. Yeah, I remember this And you can use the strap as a weapon, but you're connected to each other, so The Fiend cannot... Run away, so you can like whip him towards you. And yeah, then I think the wow. do a I think line. it'd be really cool if the fiend like literally wrapped. <laughs> this sounds so bad, but wrap the strap strap around Daniel Bryan's neck and like choked Ooh, him out. Edgy and like edgy. actually like so stuff would come out, and then the next week have the fiend come out with like a Daniel Bryan like head lantern. Oh, I would love that so much. Now, that is so edgy, but, like, that's what the what? crowd would want. That would be so, like, it'd be pretty solid. That'd be kind of weird, but it'd be solid. Yeah. But, uh, another match is Asuka versus, uh, Becky Lynch. I think that match is going to be a good match. Obviously, if you don't give Becky the win, then it's, kinda dumb. it's dumb. But I think it's really cool that they've had this storyline play out a full year now. And kind of under the radar. Yeah, it's true. In a way. Um, but, obviously Becky's going to win. Yeah, for um, sure. Seth? What's Seth doing? Seth is... Seth's doing something. I don't know what he's doing. Do you have the match card on there? Yeah, I'm pulling it up. Uh, Seth is not doing anything at the moment, actually. Is he just, pro- just chilling at the... He's going to be chilling in the Rumble He's going to be chilling in the Rumble with AOP. Uh, ooh. You could get, you could get somebody like uh, Rusev the win, Bobby Lashley the win, get him out of that storyline. Oh please, uh, but Rusev Day. Exactly. Uh, SmackDown Women's Championship is Bailey versus Lacey Evans. Uh Bailey. Uh, Bailey as a bad guy. It's awesome. It, it's different than it's different. Lacey but... Evans as a good guy. Yes. It makes so much sense, especially. Her being former military, right, exactly. having a kid, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's cool. And then the women's Royal Rumble match. I'm excited for that one because you'll see. There's not as many women. There's a lot of women, but there's not as many women on the main roster that's shown. True. So I guess you'll you'll get to see people like Sarah Logan, who you don't get to see on TV. You'll get right. Hopefully not Dana Brooke wins it because I don't like Dana Brooke. Well, Dana Brooke will never, ever be good. But, uh, or even somebody like Katie Corzano or somebody from NXT. Yeah. 
Just give an extra. And, 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 and you know you're gonna see um um uh, Baszler, Shayna Baszler. Oh, Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. If she won that, so um, I think she's. I think she might. I I could definitely see it. Shayna versus Becky. Oh, Shayna win. Oh, it'd be so good. Sioux Falls native, Shayna Baszler. Yeah, I like her guys. Sioux, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Every movie. time she comes out, I replay it. Just Sioux Falls, South Dakota, because it's just so good. But uh, that would be really cool, actually. And here at WrestleMania. It. Oh. From Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And you're just like, ah, oh, we pop. made it. I pre-ordered her uh, action figure and everything. It's like, she's going to have her own thing. She's going to have, have own a t-shirt. Sioux Falls' own. Have you ever met her? I have not met her. I've been to a, so Eugene's promotion, yeah. MAP or whatever. I've been to one where she's been there. Oh. But I haven't, like, personally met her. Right. But you haven't got, like, a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. So it's just cool. Um, Any other matches here? Zoom through. Sheamus versus Shorty G. Love it. Mm, Sheamus getting the dub. Sheamus is He's definitely back. getting the dub. He's back. Bro kick. It's over. Fella. Uh, Braun Strowman versus Shinsuke. That could be, that has potential to be decent. That could be, if Shinsuke wants to show up. So, like on TV recently, Shinsuke's been kind of meh. Like, yeah. he's just there to show up, I guess. He's not necessarily being the Shinsuke Nakamura that he can beat very easily. Right. I think if he shows up in the match against Braun Strowman, it could be amazing because Braun Strowman's very athletic and has the potential to do a lot of things that you don't get to see against normal guys. And adding Cesaro and Sami Zayn in like the corner is pretty cool to see. Right. You could have like three on one, and Braun can obviously still beat him. So true. And then. Something's going on between the New Day right now and Miz and Morrison, so I'm guessing that will be another match. True. Uh, it's cool to see Morrison back in WWE to finish off his career, but that's Royal Rumble so far. Obviously, there probably might be an, um, another ma- match announced. It'd be cool to see Lana versus Liv Morgan. Yeah. That just just. I I thoroughly enjoy Liv Morgan. I do too. I think she's gotten like. I don't know. I like that they're putting her in the main storyline on TV, but I don't like that she's in the main storyline on TV the way she is. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Obviously. Like, it's fine that she's, like, Lana's ex-girlfriend or whatever. Right. But, But I mean, like, you could do so much more with Liv Morgan, and you could have done that with Sonya Deville when it would have actually made sense. Or you could have just not have done the storyline at all. I mean, you could have, but, you know, it's the WWE, so you have to. Oh, right. So if you're gonna, you do it with the obvious person. That's very true. Not have Mandy Rose and uh, Otis together. That's amazing, though. That I thoroughly enjoy. I think that's funny. Yeah. Uh. So... That's the Royal Rumble. Yeah, really quick, before we get to our final segment, um, baseball update, Josh Donaldson, talked about it, Josh Donaldson did sign a four-year deal with the Twins. That was awesome. Yeah, it was good. I, I like to see it. He's been one of the most consistent players in baseball. It was funny because I was decked out in my Twins gear when it happened, and I took it as a good sign, of, like a good omen sign, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Does that mean Twins win World Series? You win the I, Twins I was wearing my Justin Morneau jersey, too. That was the crazy thing. Wow. Justin Morneau? What position did he play? Catcher in first base. Justin Morneau. Third base? Yeah. We just signed Josh Donaldson. He's nice. He's third baseman. Oh. Yeah. That's lit. Um, yeah. So now on to the main sport that everybody talks about here. <laughs> we got the NFL. Yeah, so we have this thing called the Super Bowl coming up in a couple yeah. weeks. Are you kidding me? I'm more hyped for the <sighs> fucking Pro Bowl, guys. Yeah, right? Ready for dodgeball? Okay, but Hell like, yeah, skills challenges. But like, high key, this is actually probably like one of the... It's probably the second best matchup that could have happened for the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, but we'll uh, get to it in a moment. We're not quite... We're not there yet. Oh, I'm there sorry. Yet, I'm guys. sorry. I'm so sorry. We gotta talk about the AFC Championship. And the NFC Championship. Oh, what's got steamrolled. I would say not at first. Not at first. first. They started off. They started off. They got chiefed. That that's that's a good that's a good point. You got chiefed. Oh, they held 
Uh, the Chiefs held Derrick Henry to 70 yards, which is very impressive. Yeah, I mean, early Tennessee executed the game plan. They they milked up clock. At one point, they had like a, what, 15-play drive? Yep, up, like, yeah, six minutes on they clock. had like 16 minutes, whereas at one point, Kansas City had like five. Which, and that's how they knew they that was the way to win the game. Don't and give Mullins you know the ball. Yeah, don't give Mullins <laughs> the ball, but it's just crazy because... You, that, that means you have little room for error. Because what if Adam yeah. Holmes do every time he touches the ball, pretty much? He scores. Touchdown. Yeah. And that's all that happened. They lost to the better team. Yeah. And they shut down Derrick Henry late in the game, though. So their game plan kind of went away after a while. Daniel actually had a pretty fairly decent game, though. We had a couple of yeah. questionable throws. Yeah. Right? But neither quarterback threw an interception that game. True. Which is really good. Very good. It's nice to see. I mean, not defensively, I guess. But it's nice to see... Well, like, there's still defensive clean, plays. A clean just, game, you know. Yeah. No. Yeah. But it's good to call for that Ryan Tannehill has probably earned himself a payday. So. Yeah. Like, Ryan Tannehill's really good at just not turning over the ball. Yeah. Ryan, Which, t- Ryan, t- Ryan, t- Ryan Tannehill's honestly always have been a solid player. Yeah. He's just, just injury prone. Injury prone. He's player. injury prone. He's what, he, what he's really good at is not turning the ball over, but sometimes, like, he just isn't the best at just moving the ball as efficiently. Which is why the game plan of just using Derrick Henry to move the ball more efficiently and bust out some play actions and stuff to get your passes when you need it had been working usually, but the Chiefs seem to have cracked the code. And Terrell Suggs actually made a big impact in this yeah, game. He had a couple, he had a uh, pass deflection, or he almost picked it off, but he had a pass deflection. I think he had a sack too. Yeah. Yep. Do we Charles Suggs? I, I, I was happy to see that. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, I forgot. He's with the Chiefs now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of Frank Clark, though. Shit talking. He had a game winning play at the end. He did, but you don't have to be like. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's the thing. You know, his shit talk wasn't backed up in that game because Derrick Henry still finished with 70 yards and a touchdown. But 70 yards and a touchdown was not uh, good for Derrick compared Henry. To, compared to what Derrick Henry was doing, I think that's pretty solid. I think it's pretty you know, good. No, it's too. solid. It's don't so- get me wrong. I- but, but for the shit well, talk... And also, he was talking shit before the game. He was saying, yeah. like, Oh, Derrick Henry's going to roll up his ear and I'm going to stop him. They still have one of the worst yards. run defenses in the league. They do, but, but they sit down Derrick Henry. Yeah, I mean, Derrick Henry had 180 yards every game before. Yeah, but to be fair, how yeah, many but also, backs also how many carries did Derrick Henry have, though? So he had 75 yards. And how many carries did he have? Uh, he had, uh, 15, 16, something like that. Yeah, that's like, what, uh, three-some yards a carry? It's not great. Yeah, but to be fair, when you go down against in that second half, he had uh, you're gonna be 19 in attempts for 69 yards. 3.6. So 3.6. Yeah, that's not good. And even and it, it, it no. honestly showed. I was watching that game, and like, there was no like big Derrick Henry plays. Like, there was, yeah, he had the touchdown. There was a couple. But like, I was watching that game, and like, Kansas is doing a great job of forcing Tennessee to pass the football. Yeah, it was especially because yeah. in his previous games, it was 6.5, 5.4, 6.6. 4.1, 5.7, 5.7, 8.4, 8.2 yards per carry. Yeah, that's yeah. a significant drop. That is a significant drop. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Derek like, Henry obviously didn't have the game like he the, had been. But... The Chiefs did what they needed to do to really step up defensively. Yeah, and exactly. that's kind of that's... just been the narrative yeah. since, like, the the later half of the season. Yeah, honestly, because honestly, their defense isn't, like, a top unit. But it's just, like, they've done what they need to do yeah. to win games. Like, like, they know that they can put up. You know, forty like damn mm-hmm. near close to forty points. They just need to keep their opponents at That's less than thirty. 30. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, in Derrick Henry's previous three games, he had won his lowest rushing in the previous three games was one hundred eighty two yards. He had a two eleven, a one eighty two, and a one ninety five. That's insane. That's a lot. Yeah. Which That's like ridiculous. The Chiefs did a good job at defending him, but we shouldn't. Like just brush over the fact that Derrick Henry did that because Derrick yeah, Henry. Yeah, no like, kidding. Because that's what? seriously one of the best runs of running back. Well, he ever. also yeah, went up against game. like a top ten defense in New England, another top ten, the number defense. one seed in the NFL, the MVP. Yeah, like MVP. they were playing against the Ravens. Yeah. See, but then that's the thing. Like we talked about, like his yards per carry, but in the New England game he had thirty four carries. In the Baltimore game he had thirty carries. So he had 11, 11 less carries. Yeah, in his almost last half. Like he had almost carries. half the carries he's been getting in the other games. 
So statistically, like he gets the same carries, he'll break a hundred yards in that. Yeah, but game. the thing is though, is like I'm always kind of a big believer of if you put yourself in a position to run the football, you run the football. Yeah. Make things as easy for a quarterback as possible. Because Ryan Tannehill, this was his first good game he had in the playoffs. Yeah. Because he didn't have to be great. That's true. He only threw like what, eleven pass attempts against Baltimore or some something stupid like number that, like yeah. that. Like it's yeah. just crazy. Like they just were they have just been able to run effectively run the football effectively run like just do it what their <laughs> game plan is they've like, kind of done what like minnesota was doing there for a little bit where they're just like we have a good running back we're just gonna run the football true yeah ryan Tannehill had 72 yards against new england and 88 passing yards against baltimore <laughs> but, then, but then 209 against kc yeah. <laughs> which is which it's like but yeah. his his quarterback rating against baltimore was 109 so yeah. like he didn't only throw 88 yards but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. They were a good 88 yards. Well, Ben, you're ready for the game that you we were all excited yeah, about. Yeah, rip, Ben. So, a team that actually did get steamrolled was the Packers. I mean, uh, that in, the end was, in the end, it was they kind of came back. I mean, it was, it was 27-0 at the half and then 37-20. to I mean, Yeah, uh, that defense yeah. that defense choked. Yeah. They, they I think 100%. they went in there a little cocky, thinking they were just going to... 49ers aren't that good. Jimmy I, I don't think they win. I feel like, like I feel like. Well, I feel like. I feel like. Oh, Smith I feel like the sure. Smith brothers. Brothers, in quotation marks, there. Well. They kind of have had just this cocky attitude that's worked for them in the playoffs, but it didn't work against San Fran because San Fran they, actually they, has they a really solid. They they come they came in as the underdog and they lost. They knew they were gonna they were probably gonna yeah, lose. Yeah, I mean. Like not, I, know. I don't. I don't want to rip on Ben's team because his team obviously made it farther than all of all ours. ours. All of ours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the Packers are probably the worst third three, third team and three team of all time. Oh. Yeah. Because oh. the but no, and I, I will because here's the thing. First off, their schedule was not up to par. There's all these all these other teams. For me, the biggest thing is is Green Bay. To put in perspective, the the gap, the margin of talent. Green Bay was a thirteen and three football team. They were eight point underdogs. Eight point underdogs in the thirteen and three number two seed. For me, I think that just says it all. Aaron Rodgers, for me, the 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 mythology is greater than the reality with Aaron Rodgers. That's true. That's true. Like we obviously hype up Aaron Rodgers to be this great quarterback. He's elite, and obviously he's all those things. Aaron Rodgers is good. I will never deny that. But he's not the same quarterback we saw prior years. Like it's just not the same player. See, but I also wouldn't. Well. I guess he had a couple of interceptions, a couple of fumbles, but I wouldn't put it all on Aaron Rodgers. Because no, no, if no, the I'm defense just saying, would have started off better. Aaron Rodgers would have played better. Yes, yeah, yeah. But Aaron, no, but I'm saying Aaron Rodgers early in the game was like missing like short passes. He was just Aaron, well, Aaron Rodgers in the beginning of the game he went ten for ten on his first ten passes, and yeah. he ended and with then they, a right, ninety-eight right. rating, three hundred. 26 yards on a pair of touchdowns. Yeah, Which, no, I, and if I'm not you just look at the Aaron numbers, Rodgers, I'm that, just saying the reality of yeah. what the Packers are. You're right. right. They need the, what Aaron Rodgers needs is the defense to step up, and when you have a running back run for 220 yards right, on four touchdowns, there's no way you're going to win. Fine, 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 six, I right. think Tevin Coleman also had like another like 70 uh, yards. Uh, Tevin Coleman went out way early. Yeah, yeah but he ran a lot. Still. No, he only ended with 21. Oh, he had one big run, I thought. Is I, I, I get a couple t- Tevin Coleman's injury is that serious for next week? I uh, think so. He should be okay. I wouldn't even say it's Not more so. Week, is uh, Tevin well, Coleman's yeah, injury game. serious? It's yeah. It's a dislocated yeah. shoulder. But is he'll? How he'll, do you say Mozart? Yeah, my Raheem Mostert. Mostert. Raheem Mostert. 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 Raheem Mostert. It's more how many <coughs> touches will Coleman get with Mostert? Um, they well, see, but they've ran <coughs> the like Brietta Mostert. Coleman, they've ran like three all year. They just, will. They went with what was working. They will. Yeah. They will try them all out, and they will throw all of their running backs at Kansas City oh, to yeah, just so. screw with that defense. Because mm-hmm. the the defense can realistically plan for the I'm going to punch you in the face running right. offense well, of Derrick Henry. They didn't use Burita at all. Right. Yeah. 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 They, they didn't need Packers. to though. Yeah. Well, yeah. But if Tevin Coleman's hurt, then if Tevin Coleman's hurt, I I expect Burita to see some snaps. Because actually, there is a there is a weird statistic where um, if Mostert ends up getting in more like physical games, he does tend to get more and more tired. And if he's the feature back, sometimes it's it's interesting. Um, just from what I've seen, this team still has Jared McKinnon. Too. I don't know. They just haven't oh used Burita in a while. 
McKinnon's. Yeah, yeah, he's on the yeah, injury. Yeah, remember when Burrito was like, he's the number one running back. Burrito the hasn't had a hasn't had a hundred yard game since October. Yeah. October seventh against Cleveland to be exact. But he's still a key part of that yeah. offense. <laughs> but like Kyle Shanahan is like an Kyle, offensive wizard. Kyle Shanahan is a much better coach in, than I think people last, were giving him credit. In the for. last seven weeks, Matt Burrito's only had one game of more than twenty rushing yards. Um. Kyle Shanahan becomes the first father son yep. duo to ever coach in a Super Bowl. It was so it cool to have, uh, was it Brad, Terry Bradshaw that handed off the trophy? Yeah, he handed yeah, it to, to Mike. Mike. And then Mike handed it to the coach, but then the coach handed it, like in the background, handed it back to Mike, and Mike handed it to. It was a really cool moment. Scene. Yeah. Like, even if you wanted the outcome of the game to be different, that was, was still cool a good moment see. for football. But, uh, yeah, that 49ers defense looked, toward, in the first half, looked scary. If they can bring that to the Chiefs game, I, I, I think really the Chiefs are think in trouble. I really think that this is probably going to be, like, the most, like, like I said earlier when I was talking about how this is probably, like, the second best possible matchup in the Super Bowl. I think, I think that this matchup is going to be really close. Like, I don't think either team is going to run away with it. Yeah. And that's what both of these teams have, are kind of known for doing. Yeah. I, I think the Niners are going to get Chiefs. I think they're going to put up, it's going to be 20 0 there in the first half, and it's going to, the Chiefs are going to put up like 50 points. It's going to be like 51 45. But this is, the, score that. Like, this is still the Niners defense, though. Yeah, I, I, Pat Mahomes is going to. I, I have no worries yeah. about Pat Mahomes. Yeah, at this point, Matt Patrick is never the worry. Here's my thing that separates San Fran from Kansas City. All right, guys, I want to play a game. First, I want to play it. Okay. Does anybody want to guess how many pass attempts Jimmy Garoppolo? He Eleven. Was, he had nine pass attempts. Right. No. How many? No. All the playoffs. I actually saw that. Seventeen. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven had, pass attempts. Aaron Rodgers had the same amount of pass attempts in the second half of last night's game that Jimmy Garoppolo has the entire playoff. That is insane. That's guys. awesome. Two or three of the two or three of the Niners score drives were just run plays. Yeah. It was like ten run plays. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you Listen, look at it, my ten. ten NFC Championship <laughs> game and your quarterback throws <laughs> under ten passes. That is crazy. And you under thirty you do? all the postseason. Lamar Jackson even threw more passing to attempts. Like, that's crazy. Well, I mean that shows something in today's NFL when you have Ryan Tannehill throwing for what 13, 14 times. You have right. it's just it's been, it's, been a, it's been a year dot. It's crazy. The whole. It seems it's been a playoff dominated by like running football teams, and you have Kansas City who's all up in here, like passing, all, yeah, yeah, like we're the modern NFL. Uh, yeah. Actually, with Kansas City's win over the Titans, that makes Andy Reid the second coach in NFL history to beat every single franchise twice. Crazy! Oh, that's, twice? That's awesome. Twice. I didn't know that. The first one is, is Bill, Bill Belichick. Well, obviously, it's actually also the second longest gap between Super Bowl periods. Yep. Mm-hmm. Andrew, with Eagles, oh, yeah, Andrew, yeah. so 15 years. Really but like, if you look at it, it, the Chiefs themselves haven't been, they haven't been in the playoffs since 1969. Yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping that that's yeah, actually the enough. longest. It's actually the longest Super Bowl appearance drought. Yeah, other than teams that were formed and have never made it to the Super Bowl, like the Browns. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's cool to see. Uh, way too early predictions, real quick. Who do you think is going to be seeing the Super Bowl in 2021? I think the Niners will be back next year. I also think I think it's going to be the Niners, and I want to. I don't want to say it's going to be the Chiefs again, but I think it's going to be the Niners. Chiefs like again. this, literally could be a repeat next yeah. year. <laughs> uh, I, I think Baltimore. I, I think Baltimore figures their shit out. I see, think Baltimore makes it to the Super Bowl. But I don't know because. They didn't plan correctly. You what you do with Lamar Jackson is you don't throw him thirty, have him throw thirty times like they did in that game, and when Lamar feels like he needs to throw, well, that's Lamar something that throws. they're probably gonna work on. In but the Lamar offseason. doesn't want to run, and as Lamar, Lamar gets, just doesn't want to be known as the guy that ran. And if you he wants to be known as a quarterback that is a dual I threat know, option. Right Right? Yeah, no. The running back doesn't want to be known as a running back. It's been that's been his whole narrative with his MVP season is I'm not a running back, I'm a dual threat quarterback. I don't I don't even know who 
I'd throw in there for the Here's NFC. Here's the thing is I don't know who in the NFC can stop the 49ers. No. Because they're only going to get better this offseason. And See, they're all really young. Like, and I the thought only old really people young. is Joe Staley yeah. who might retire, uh, which that O-line hit was not stuck. Gonna over, not going to overreact about the Niners. I, I get it. We're all hyped up about the Niners. The, I don't like to... I, I don't like to make early predictions because I'm always like let 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 way the, too early let, prediction. The let, Cardinals are gonna make the playoffs next let the, year. Oh, let, I agree. I think the let Cardinals let the make dust playoffs. settle. Let let the off season happen. They're going to get the bat a not very good Seahawks team, a not very good Rams team at the stop. Moment. That, that, no. that, that, that puts them number two already. No. Okay. No. 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 Jared Goff. Jared Goff's going to have a bounce back year. A okay. Bounce back year. Yes. But see, I'm not a boofer. No. <laughs> No, um, Jared Goff is having a bounce back here. The Vikings are going to tank. It. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah obviously. If you look at the teams that made the playoffs in the NFC this year, do you see any of them threatening again next year, though? The Packers aren't going to be as deadly. The Packers aren't. The Matt, Vikings are Matt LaFleur is going to um, have his job threatening made? next year. The, 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 the Seahawks. Well, the Packers are going to be the playoffs. The Seahawks are going to be the playoffs. The Seahawks are going to be the playoffs. I don't know. If Matt LaFleur can't get the Packers to perform well in the playoffs, he'll lose his job. Matt LaFleur, his first-year head coach, went 13-3. Yes. No, all of our new free agents are on multi-year contracts. If we if we get more free agents in the offseason, I don't see why the Packers are not playoff contenders. Why they? I think the Rams are playoff contenders, guys. Because here's the thing. Literally everything is set up for us to su- succeed because defensively we're going to be a top five unit this year on the defense side of the ball. I'm calling it right now. Rams are going to be a top five unit. The Broncos were considered a top five unit, and look how they did. Uh, Panthers, just, Panthers are going to have a rise next year. I don't know if they're going to quite make the playoffs. Oh, okay. They might make wild. Next year. I don't think they're going to be awful. They're gonna, they're gonna I be, really don't think they're going to be It's going to take a couple like years. The Saints, no, like, do you think the Saints are going to be as deadly yes. next year? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, because they're not losing that. anything. I they're doubt, really I yeah, doubt what if Drew, what what if Drew Brees decides to retire in the offseason? Uh, I think they could retiring. do it with Teddy. I but don't think Teddy totally leaves. They have to re-sign Teddy, but I think the Saints are going to re-sign See, Teddy. See, but that's, that's the thing. Is there so many questions going into the offseason for all the teams in the NFC outside of the 49s? What questions are I think Dallas, Dallas, gonna, I think Dallas is going to be good next year. I think Dallas has the potential to be a top two seed in the NFC next year. Because they're not going to just try to get my, <laughs> Jason Garrett fired. Who's yeah. their new head coach? Mike McCarthy. Who oh, won yeah. the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, I, think, th- I think you make good points. They have all the. If they sign their pieces, yeah, they got the pieces. Yeah, Amari Cooper's going to be a free agent. Now, Michael Gallup's a great receiver. Don't get me wrong. But you resign, if you re sign Cooper, you re sign. Randall Cobb's a free agent, too. Like, Gallup's going to be their only receiver. They still don't have a tight end. You don't need find the name an elite receiver on the 49ers. Debo Samuel. Samuel. Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, Emmanuel I mean, Sa- Sa- yeah but like. But what, neither George of them Kittle. are like. No, but that's a tight end. I said receivers. Yeah, if you look at their. If you look at receiving tight end outside no, of but, but Debo, No, but Debo Samuel was, what, a rookie this year? Yeah. yeah. And, and he only broke and out like, because there was injuries. There's also like Marquise Goodwin, exactly. and like you they never, have depth, but they're all like right. I, I, under, I understand guys. what I'm saying is you don't need a top elite receiver like Amari Cooper or Odell Beckham or whatever. You can win with Debo Samuel and Emmanuel Sanders, who's never been a number one guy. You can True. win with that. If you're uh, have like Baltimore, we can win with a rookie uh, what rookie wide receiver and Willie Sneed. You know, we can win with those guys. It's just how you use them, right? Yeah. Or Pittsburgh will will be a play. We'll be a borderline playoff team with eh. ju- borderline. Playoff I feel like team. okay, okay, okay. Well, borderline. Steelers. Steelers. Okay. Yeah. Ju- I agree with ju- that. Ju- Washington. Actually, what if the Steelers were to try to get a higher pick in the draft to get a quarterback? The Steelers don't have a pick because they traded. Oh. Yeah, that's right. True. I think Joe Burrow's gonna be a beast in the NFL. So I think Cincinnati could be a fun team to watch. Oh well, yeah, I think I, Joe I really Burrow is going to be successful no matter. Like there's some I don't either, but I think they're probably going to. Like there's some quarterbacks you know that come out of college if they go to a team you think they're going to be doomed. I don't think Joe I think you put he Joe Burrow anywhere. Do you effect though where his team's just not good? <laughs> Cuz well, the Bengals team just isn't very great. But still Joe Burrow still uh, can but, be a well, great thing is quarterback. Like, well, it's like thing is is like with the Bengals like in the off like early in the year we were talking about the Bengals on offense. Have weapons to work with. We're yeah. talking about the North being deadly, the yeah. AFC North. Yeah, yeah. but they're just, they're just offensive the lines just horrendous. Right, like it's, defense it's, is it's bad. the it's the worst offensive line in the league. Probably. Like they don't have anybody. Well, like the only well, it seems like you have two different sides of the AFC North. You have Baltimore and Cleveland who have really shitty O lines, but good pieces on the rest of their team, except 
obviously Cincinnati's. I would say the Ravens have a shit. The Ravens have a pretty good O line. Did I say Ravens? Yeah. I meant Browns. Oh. You said Browns. You said, you said Browns. Ravens and Browns. I meant Cincinnati and, and Browns. Cleveland and, and Cleveland and Cincinnati. Well, My bad. But like they have really bad O lines, but everything around them is kind of at least somewhat decent. Obviously, the Cincinnati defense is kind of lacking, but I like really the Chiefs that. there. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I did what I was driving. Um, Makes sense. Then on the other two teams, you have great O line in Pittsburgh. Great O line in. Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. I think this is the only thing I'm going to say about the Packers is they're going to be better next year. You think they'll be better? better? Yeah. We, we're, no! We, have, we, only, we only have like three big free agents we've decided to I know, but you guys are going to... What's, your, well, ske- what's yeah. your schedule look like next yeah, year? It's going to be way year. tougher. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Ben, are A you first saying the Packers are going to be better like talent-wise, or they're going to be better record-wise? Or they're going to be better yards? Talent of, like, your because, stat yeah, maybe talent-wise, but I, they're not going to be 13-3 three. Our, our, our only big free agent losses here is going to be Brian Bulaga, Blake Martinez, and Mercedes Lewis. They're only three starters. That we're probably, right, like, but, you guys but, but are probably going to go right, after like Brian defense, Bulaga. Yeah, right, but the defense has talent, but it's like, where do they fit at a finishing in the NFL well, this Well, this was Matt LaFleur's first season. I think he, he's going to work better, and I think Mike I'm, Pettin is going to get better next I'm year. on Ben's side, kind, not really, but kind of. With right, me. but the thing is... Matt LaFleur, like, he's going to be good. Here's the thing. Yeah, good I, coach, great coach. If this is, I think, as we kind of... At least I forgot about it. If the Bears can make the right move at the quarterback, yeah, they're gonna be back in it. The or Bears are Mitch right Trubisky back at Super Bowl. I agree. I a thousand percent agree. Because that was the only reason that team. That's true. That's this. very true. You give Atlanta, it's, you you give Atlanta a healthy defense get. and a good offensive line. Atlanta's a contender. That's like, true. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Like Atlanta, like blew off some of the top teams Hell, when they maybe were. Maybe even give Tampa a quarterback who's not gonna turn the ball over thirty times by himself. So why are they going after Phil Rivers? Huh? I'm not, I'm not what saying what if Tom Brady Rivers? decides to uh, make his trip uh, to the southwest yeah. to Chicago? Ooh. What if he went to Tampa? I, oh, Chris Goodwin, Mike Evans. Oh my God, that'd be fun. That would and be a really fun line. team. Yeah, so, so instead of next year predictions, we do have a Super Bowl coming up. In yeah. Two weeks. yeah, yeah, that's true. And only five minutes left, so we're gonna go there right now. Okay. Uh, Niners, KC, Patrick Mahomes, Jimmy G. I think. Hey, I'm gonna stand by what I said. What I said last week. I said Casey Patrick Mahomes is gonna be able to out throw. He's gonna throw more yards, and Derrick Henry's Derrick Henry is not gonna be able to leave the offense fast enough. I think Patrick Mahomes is gonna out throw what Derrick Henry can run. I think it's gonna happen the same the same week. Jimmy G is not gonna be able to have a 70 yard passing game this week against Patrick Mahomes. I think Patrick Mahomes is gonna probably throw 400 yards. I think if they want to stay competitive, Jimmy G needs to throw two touchdowns, and they need to have two rushing touchdowns. But I still have the Chiefs winning forty-five. Is that twenty-eight? Forty-five yeah. to twenty-eight. Um, I originally had the Chiefs um, winning this game. I think it was like thirty-five to thirty-eight. I changed my score um, nice. after the Niners game last night because oh. I preemptively put the Chiefs winning. Right. Um, but yeah, I have the 49ers winning the Super Bowl now. 42 to 30. I think this will be a super close game. I think this will be a complete 180 of last year's Super Bowl. I think this is going to be a touchdown on almost every drive. Oh, I this definitely this agree. Super Bowl yeah. is just going to be It's going to be insane. fun to watch. You're not going to be able to turn right. Yeah, every this, big this play, Bowl, big I, play, big yeah, play. I think this is going to be a really fun Super Bowl. I have the 49ers winning 42 to 38. I have almost a 90 bar. No, would you like to go, or would we like to make well, Brendan go right now? We'll make Brendan go. Okay. Uh, uh, I think I also think that the Niners are going to win, and my reasoning for this is defense wins championships. Right. I feel like Jimmy G is something to prove. I do feel like Patrick Mahomes doesn't have something to prove, but like feels like he does because you know made it to the AFC Championship. Got the MVP. Okay. Right. Lost to Tom Brady. Yes, sir. Now he's in the Super Bowl. Okay. Like, he thinks that this is like his only chance. Yes, but, sir. But like, I feel like the AFC is just getting weaker every yes. day. Yes. No, sir. I really feel like it's getting weaker. Keep going. Basically, sir. Baltimore is the only competition there. But the AFC is building. This is another. Uh, yeah. Time. Next another week. time. Keep going. Another time. But I feel like with like the collection of the team that the Niners have kind of built. Defensively, I feel like they're going to make plays. Offensively, I feel like Kyle Shanahan's just kind of a genius, and he's going to find ways to move the ball. Even if they have to kick like a few field goals here, 
Like, I trust Robbie Gold making, like, six field goals if he has to. But, anyways. He was, uh. They're running in shit for, uh. Yeah, franchise tags. Yeah, but remember Makes the, remember the one score. game that they didn't have him and they What's couldn't beat score? the Seahawks? Yeah. What's your score? 38-31, 49ers. Yeah, um, I think this is probably going to be one of the better Super Bowls we've seen. Vegas has Kansas City's one-point favorite. If it stands by the time the game rolls around, it'll be only the fifth Super Bowl in NFL history where the scoreline is less than five points in terms of the betting. So it's going to be a good football game. Um, one thing I'll say about San Francisco is obviously their defense, their front seven is the best in football right now. Kansas City's offensive line is not that great. But Patrick Mahomes is a, is a great athlete. I think he's going to find – like. You think with the thing with like uh, San Francisco is like, like yeah, Aaron Rodgers can move around, but he's not the same mobile quarterback he was back in, earlier in his career, you know, and all that stuff. Or he played like um, Kirk Cousins, who has one of the worst pocket awarenesses in the NFL, you know. So I think with Patrick Mahomes, he's gonna find a way to keep plays alive. He's gonna find a way to find guys open. This second, this secondary, I think is gonna have some issues trying to cover these fast. Elite receivers that yeah. Kansas City has, like they're gonna, it's gonna be trouble, and they're not, may not be able to figure out how to stop Kelsey because they haven't seen anything like that other than the other guy that's on their own freaking team, which actually might end up working because in practice you'll see George Kittle may take Travis Kelsey, but Travis Kelsey is still a good athlete in his own right. Um, and the thing is, is Jimmy Garoppolo has to play better because the thing with this game is, is it's all about pace. You have to keep pace with your opponent. Like, I'm not saying you have to score. Like, I, I think there's going to be a good mix of great defensive plays and a lot of offense. You're, like, Jimmy Garoppolo can't get away. Because, like, I do think Kansas City has been playing much better defense in the later half of the year. That's including on the rush defense. I think they're going to see what they did against Derrick Henry. They're going to do their best to do that against San Fran. But eventually, it's all about keeping pace. If you get a field goal and Kansas City scores a touchdown and you do have two drives in a row, you have to keep pace. Right. And I don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo can do that because he hasn't had to, to his credit. But I don't know if he can, though. I just don't know that. This is the biggest game in Jimmy Garoppolo's career. And it seems every time I said I doubted him, he seems to prove me wrong. He plays good. But this is it. This is the Super Bowl. Like, this is it. I don't I, – I'm going to give the edge to the – just straight up, I think the only difference in this game is the quarterback position. An advantage, Kansas City, 34-31. Kansas City wins – in a late field goal. All right. No, you're wearing a Miami hat. I am wearing a Miami hat. All right, right. Yeah, it's so the festive. Su- yep. Super Bowl's in Miami. Yes. The Simpsons have an episode where it's the 49ers and the Chiefs. Two of the 49ers Super Bowls are won in Miami. Yep. And, a, and the Super Bowl in Miami. You know who wins that game? Who? The 49ers. Wait a minute. You know who that I'm that going with? Happen, right? What? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it did. did. Oh, it did it. The Simpsons yeah. did not just predict the Super yep. Bowl. You know what? what? You know what I'm going with? Oh, my 49ers, 38, 31. Wow. Homer Simpson's going to get another trophy. It's going to be a great game. <laughs> that's and insane. that's how we're going to end the show this week. So, I'm Duncan. I'm Ethan. Go Old Spice Car. I'm Ben. I'm still here. I am Noah. I am also still no, here. No, you're not. Okay. No, remember? And that's Brendan. You're, you're Pop- Listen, oh, thanks Pop- for Pop- listening Pop- to the Side Spot Podcast. We'll see you next week. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And everywhere else, like, subscribe, and share this podcast with all your friends, family, and everybody in the